what up, what up? Welcome to the first episode of Yo Sun Dynasty, a new podcast designed to bring you soul happenings from a New Yorker's perspective. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Candy and I'm a Baltimore American, but I also lived in New York for over a decade and I've been living in Seoul, Korea for over five years. As my time in Korea draws to a close, I felt like I should maybe document the time I've spent here and the things I've been getting into. Um, Plus, my friends back home have been hounding me a long time to do a blog or get on Instagram or at least Facebook. And so instead, my darlings, I give you a podcast. Now, I'm doing this from a New York perspective because that is where I've really dove into the art scene. Um, So even though that's not my home home, it also is an unofficial home for me. And even though I have a lot of wonderful Korean friends, uh, when we think about hanging out, I think our concepts of fun are a little different. So I don't know how many people realize, but Korea has a lot of mountains. So it's not uncommon for my friends to invite me hiking regularly. Um, or to do something related to nature, like going to see the cherry blossoms. And that's really nice. But all trees look the same to me. All flowers look the same to me. And I can only pretend to be amazed for so long. And so hiking is usually not going to be at the top of my list when I'm looking for something to do on the weekend. They also have a lot of palaces in the city. There's a really nice mix of like the traditional history and modern life in Seoul. But again, all the palaces kind of look the same. So you go once for the tour, you go again at night to see everything all lit up. Maybe you go a third time so you can wear a hanbok, like the traditional clothes and feel like you're in the old days. So that's pretty much three trips to the palace and you're good. So when I'm thinking about hanging out, I'm thinking, let's see a show. Let's go see some music because a New York night out might be a little bit of everything. You're going to dance. You're going to go to some hipster bar and have some good whiskey cocktails. You're going to go see a friend in their one man show in a basement somewhere downtown. You're going to end up at a dance party in Bushwick. You might end up watching a movie on a rooftop somewhere. That's just going to be your typical Tuesday night in New York. So that's what I'm used to. And Seoul was not really giving me that my first year. So For year two, maybe year three, I started actively looking for New York types of things to do in Seoul. Now, I appreciate Seoul for what it is. I don't think Seoul needs to become New York in order to be like a fun city. But as someone who was going to spend a little time here, I felt like I need to find things that are normal and familiar to me in order to really like feel like I'm... And I'm in my third home, maybe. Um, So the idea is I'm going to give a monthly rundown of interesting events going on around the city. Now, granted, these things may only be of interest to me and my taste. So if you're into art house cinema or uh, underground music or just a chill place, to relax, that's kind of foreigner friendly and not in Itaewon, then that's what I'm bringing. Uh, I'm not saying it's cool. I'm not saying it's trendy. I'm just saying when I do these things or go to these places, I feel like I found a little piece of Brooklyn or the East Village right here in Seoul. So I will not be talking about how to get a teaching job here or if Korean men like black women, trust me, You can do a quick YouTube search and find a million channels to suit your special needs. Uh, But for this channel, we're going to try and keep it strictly arts and culture. Okay. left 
in November. So I'm just going to do a couple things that caught my eye that you can still do maybe in the week (laughs) that we have remaining. Um, I promise if I do a December episode, I'll do it much earlier. So there's an exhibit at the Museum of Contemporary History in Jongno, Seoul, not far from the U.S. Embassy, and it's called The Country They Have All Dreamed Of. And it's talking about how Korea developed after Japanese colonialism in 1945 up through forming its constitution in 1948. Now, I haven't been yet, but it's at the top of my to-do list. It's running through December 2nd, and it sounds pretty interesting to me for one reason because I love a tight look at history. It's such a specific period of time and according to the site it's looking at how all the suppressed voices of intellectuals, artists, and farmers struggle together to form a vision of what a free Korean society could be and of course the growing pains that went along with that. Uh, Like I said, it's running until December 2nd and it's free so that makes it even better to check out. Um, there's also a special guided tour of the exhibit in English coming up that I think is running through the Royal Asiatic Society, but I think you either have to pay for that tour or pay to be a member of the Asiatic Society. And I just hate ruining a free event with money. So if I don't have to, I usually don't. The exhibits are always at least bilingual, Korean, English, and maybe even a little Chinese or Japanese, depending on the subject. So you can usually work it out. Um, The link will be in the description if you're interested. Um, But really, the biggest, dorkiest event in my world for November happens on the 24th, which is really, really soon, depending on when you're listening to this. Um, And it's the annual Freddie Mercury tribute by Young Buin, which is Korea's best and maybe only Queen tribute band. Uh, Young Buin, which I might be butchering because my pronunciation is whack, is the Korean word for first lady. So the first lady of a nation is also called a queen. And there you go. It took me like a year to figure out why the band was called what it was called. Um, But this will be my third time going to the concert. And it is just the most joyous celebration. I happen to think that Queen fans are some of the most open, fun-loving people. And if you saw Bohemian Rhapsody, there's a scene when the band plays in Rio and Freddie didn't realize the crowd understood him at all until they started singing all the lyrics to Love of My Life back to him. And in a very small way, that's how I felt the first time I went to the tribute concert a couple years ago. I'm looking at all these Korean people who I bet on the street, if I had asked them for help would be like, oh, no Englishy, no Englishy, and would have run away from me. But when it comes to singing Another One Bites the Dust, they got all the English in perfect intonation. So I was just beyond shocked. But the band singing is dope. Their costumes are dope, and they change throughout the set, and the musicianship is undeniable. It's just a really good time. And, of course, the audience is also in costume, and they bring signs and wear masks and whatever else they want. I will be in my Flash Gordon t-shirt repping hard, even though they never include that on the set list, which is a freaking tragedy. But I rarely see more than a few expats there. So I don't know if people just don't like Queen, which is actually impossible, or if people just don't know this awesome band even exists, which I feel is even more likely. So November 24th at Rolling Hall in Hongdae, I'll leave the address and the band's Facebook page below because advanced ticks are actually already sold out. So you have to buy at the door. But in my humble opinion, it's 20,000 won well spent and it drops you in the heart of Hongdae on a Saturday night. So you'll have plenty to do after the show. Okay, so my first interview for this episode is with Injin of Wonder Mama. 
Uh, it's a boutique that I discovered in the Hongdae neighborhood that I used to live in. And I don't know if you've ever traveled to Korea or if you live here, you know the main thing people usually tell you is to bring all your clothes from home because it is not easy to find maybe Western sizes in Korea. Either the sleeves will be too short or you can't really pull it over your hips or the shirt is not really designed for someone larger than an A cup. So you need to have your American size clothes. But I was walking through this neighborhood and saw some clothes that reminded me of the New York style I used to like, kind of like a hipster librarian. But seeing cute clothes and being able to fit those clothes are still very different things. So against my better judgment, I wandered in. And now, like for the past two years, whenever I'm ready to shop, I go to Wonder Mama first and I always walk out with something. So Today, I'm going to be talking with the store owner, Kim and Jean, and also we have Eddie with us to make sure that she can understand my questions and I can understand her answers. So thank you both. Uh, first question, how did you discover your interest in fashion? fashion? <laughs> 패션에 관심이 많았다기보다 바느질하는 거를 좋아했고 만드는 거를 좋아했는데 거기 좀 이제 한국 사람들 잘 모르겠지만 인형옷 만드는 거 있잖아요 그런 거에 대해서 처음에 만들 일을 시작하다가 재밌다고 생각을 하면서 계속 바느질을 했었는데 가족 중에 저의 친 언니가 패션 디자인 전공을 해서 조금 더 쉽게 접할 수 있는 기계 계기가 되었고. 그리고 저도 같이 패션 디자인을 전공함으로써 조금 더 많은 관심을 갖게 되었죠. So in the beginning, she actually, when she was younger, she loved sewing. So and which is not typical in Korea, but she used to sew her own dolls. And within her family as well, uh, her older sister was a fashion major design. Uh, so. And she always thought it was interesting and to watch her older sister do that. So she actually followed in her footsteps and she also majored in fashion design. Mm, cool. Did you work in a lot of other stores before opening your own? I was in another 디자이너로 1년 정도 일을 하다가 28살쯤에 회사를 나와서 홍대 여기 근처의 가게들 몇 군데에서 일을 하기 시작했어요. 한세 군데 정도였는데 기간은 대략 한 4년 정도 합쳐서 4년, 5년 이 정도였던 것 같아요. So after she majored in fashion design and she actually graduated, she actually went into a fashion design um, company and uh -huh. she worked there um, when she was tw till 27 uh -huh. or 28 and then she came to Hongdae area and she started working for about three different stores uh, for total about five years before opening her own store. Uh -huh. uh what did you learn while you were in those different stores? Like what you did, how to manage, or the kinds of clothes you wanted to put into your shop? So like the main thing she learned was how to deal with customers. Mm -hmm. So the customer service, when customers come in, how to greet them, and also how to pick um, clothes that the customer would look good in. Okay. All right. So then that kind of, that gives me two questions. <laughs> um, First about customer service. I don't know if you are aware, but a lot of um, non-Korean shoppers 
tend to complain sometimes about being followed around the store when they come in or sometimes because Westerners are a little bigger, sometimes uh, the store owner will say, oh, you can't fit that, put that down. And they don't let you try on things. So I feel like the vibe is a little different here. How, what is your approach to customer service? So, 이제 대부분 한국 가게든 이제 외국 사람 오면 이제 따라 다니고 아니면 이제 이 옷은 안 맞다 그렇게 바로 말하는데 여기는 좀 그런 거는 아닌 것 같은데 무슨 이제 커스터머 서비스는 어떻게 생각하는지 저는 일단 손님들이 어떻게 선택을 하는지가 더 중요하다고 생각을 해요. 그리고 그 옷이 잘 맞거나 아니거나 일단 입어보라고 하고 눈으로 확인을 시켜요. 남이 보는 눈이 아무리 맞다 틀리다라고 판단을 하는 건 저지만 실제로 옷을 사서 입는 것은 본인이기 때문에 본인의 눈으로 확인을 하고 혹시 그 손님이 이거 어때요? 라고 물어볼 때 대답을 하죠. 괜찮네요. So, so her view is um, she just concentrates on what they pick and always tell them to try it on because um, they're the ones who are buying it and so they have to see what it looks like, how it looks on them first and then if they ask, oh, how does this look, then she'll give a response. But she, no matter what she says, if she doesn't think it's, um, it will fit or not, it's not her choice to make because <laughs> she just wants the customers to see for themselves first. Okay. All right. Yeah, that is something I noticed from shopping here that, you know, if I pick up something that's definitely like my shoulders cannot fit into that dress, she's like a very gentle reality check. Or she'll say, how about this instead, instead of just put that down. So that's a better shopping experience, I think. Um, so then the other thing you mentioned is helping people find what they would look good in. The style of this store maybe is not typical Korean trend. So how do you decide what to stock in your store? So, Style, 예전에 아주 예전에는 그런 옷들이 많지 않아서 사실은 고르기가 많이 힘들었는데 요즘은 어쩐 일인지 이렇게 좀 약간 사이즈들이 넉넉한 옷들이 많이 나와서 고르기에도 쉽지만 일단 손님들 먼저 생각을 하죠. 올해 여기에 있다 보면 생각나는 사람들 있잖아요. 입으면 예쁘겠다 싶은 것들. 네. So, um, so in the beginning she just chose clothes that are big and long because that's the style she liked. Mm -hmm. And typically, most stores in Korea they go to Dongdaemun to buy their clothes. Um, but it used to be hard to find those kind of clothes. But nowadays, maybe style is changing a little bit, and like the bigger size is coming out more. So it's, but and also she concentrates on customers. So like regular customers that she comes comes to her store, she like kinds like, oh, this would look good on them, and mm -hmm. that's how she decides on. Her okay, cool. And so you mentioned like your personal taste is like big and long clothes. Um, so <laughs> I have seen her in coats that she like disappears into. So yeah, but they fit me perfectly. So it's it's a win win. Um, maybe if you don't live in Korea or if you haven't visited, you don't know. But like there's something called free sizes, which is like the equivalent of one size fits all in the States. Um, so you can go to a store that sells free sizes and still not be able to get like one arm into it. Um, but your free sizes seem legitimately free. So do you, are you shopping with, 
I don't know, with a foreign audience in mind, or you said you have regulars too, why, why do your clothes fit all people? Why the inclusive sizes? Yeah, 한국에는 가게들은 free size 많은 기능이 있는데요. 이제 free size는 이제 외국 사람들한테는 좀 작죠. 그래서 근데 여기 가게는 free size가 진짜 free size 같은 느낌인데 이제 다 크고 이제 그래서 free size 고를 때는 진짜 뭐 외국 사람들은 생각해서 사는 거예요. 아니면 그냥 뭐왜 어떻게 이제 큰 사이즈가 좋은다 그랬는데 이제. 고를 때 이제 외국 사람들 생각해서 하는 건지 어 그거는 아니고 일단 편한 옷을 제가 좋아하죠 왜냐면은 제가 옷을 팔때이 옷이 얼마큼 편한지를 제가 느끼고 있어야 편한 옷을 찾는 사람들에게 일단 보여주기가 좋고. 그리고 진짜 말 그대로 주변에는 작은 옷들이 정말 많아요. 작은 옷들을 살때 사는 곳은 많은데 그런 사람들이 너무너무 힘들어서 저희 집에 왔을 때 어, 여기에 나한테 맞는 바지가 있어. 나한테 맞는 뭐 니트가 있어. 약간 이렇게 되면 저는 제가 좋아하는 스타일을 그들도 좋아하기 때문에 고맙고 고마우니까 그래서 더 신경 써서 찾는 것 같아요. So uh, she buys clothes that she thinks is going to be comfortable for everyone. Um, so it's just about comfortable. She likes comfortable clothes. She likes being comfortable. So she wants her customers to be able to find clothes that are comfortable. And around Hongdae, there's a lot of stores that sell, like you said, uh, free size, which is like very small to foreigners. Um, but when those kind of customers that can't find their size in their stores, they come here and they're like really happy, like, oh, these pants fit. <laughs> uh, and so, and then when they're happy and then that makes her happy. And so it's kind of a win-win. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I gasp a lot in this. They're like, oh, I can fit it. Oh my goodness. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you feel that joy because I'm super happy that I don't have to just go to H&M all the time. Uh, last question. Um, is Wonder Mama your dream job? Or do you have some other goal related to fashion or something else that you are working toward? fashion <laughs> 준비 단계라고 생각을 하고 제가 하고 싶은 일은 사실은 패션은 아니에요. 그러니까 왜냐면 길게 놓고 봤을 때 저는 여기서 옷으로 일단 손님들을 대하면서 사람을 상대하는 법을 계속적으로 배우고 있는 중이에요. 그래서 옷은 일단 제가 좋아하는 거기 때문에 사람과 함께 할수 있는 방법 그리고 그 사람들이 그냥 물건을 사러 오는 사람 일 수도 있지만 그렇지 않은 사람들이 사실은 되게 많거든요. 그래서 얘기를 하면서 같이 대화 나누는 것도 좋아하기 때문에 최종으로는 다른 목표가 있지만 지금 제가 할수 있는 범위 안에서 계속 이 일은 하고 싶긴 해요. 네. So her ultimate goal is actually not in fashion. Um, the reason why she's doing this is she likes fashion, she likes clothes, and but the main reason she wants to learn is um, how to interact with customers and people. And that's what she's actually learning while she's doing this. And just even though some customers come to, for a reason to buy clothes, there's other customers who just come to interact and just talk with her and things like that. And, and that's what she likes and just how, how to interact with people. And she has other goals. But um, actually, her main goal isn't actually fashion. Okay. And you're okay when people just come in to hang out and don't buy anything. So, if you come to the house, you can't buy anything. 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 You can't buy 
So right now too, there's customers that actually come and they don't buy, they just come to hang out and talk and okay. she likes that and so. Okay. So, so. All right, and Jinshi, thank you so much. <laughs> And thank you, Eddie, too. Uh, lovely talking to you both. And that brings us to the end of the first episode. Thanks again to Injin for taking some time out of her busy day to chat with me and to Eddie for making sure we could understand each other. As you probably could notice, Injin's voice was a little hard to understand. We were actually chatting during business hours at her shop and so the music was on and she was a little bit closer to the speaker than I realized. So hopefully you could make out what she was saying. If not, then hopefully you enjoyed the Beatles music playing in the background. Uh, you live, you learn. Like Alana said, next time will be better. So the plan is to talk to you again next month with a few December highlights around the city. But you know, a sister's got a job and no budget to produce a podcast. So we'll see if that happens or not. Until then, I'll leave you with a soul sound. November's soul sound comes from Ilgamo a lake found on the campus of Konkuk University on the east side of the city. Not only is it a rare slice of serenity in a busy, crowded city, but it's also home to some ducks and geese and other birds who will be disappearing soon as the temperatures take a dive and the lake freezes over. Thank you for joining me on a quick glimpse of my Korean adventure, and hopefully wherever you are, you will also take a little time to get out of the house and find your soul. Ciao, ciao.